speaking with Oscar-winning uh, composer Elliot Goldenthal, whose music will be celebrated at the Film Music Festival in Krakow, Poland, on May 26th. Um, but thanks so much. It's uh, great to be able to chat again. Hi. Um, good, good. <laughs> And, uh, it, was real, uh, it would be nice to go back to Auschwitz, I suppose. <laughs> How did this concert come to uh, fruition? And and uh, were you approached by the folks at the Film Music Festival? Or yeah, you... yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it came uh, to the wonderful folks uh, at the, uh, 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 the Polish Festival um, when they uh, visited me. Uh, uh, they attended the festival in, um, in uh, Ghent. Mm-hmm. Uh, Two years ago, and um, and they uh, they were speaking about their festival and uh, how uh, excited uh, they are about um, you know in, in film music in general. And uh, they were uh, mentioning at the time they they were uh, saying they they wanted to uh, produce. Uh, present uh, interview with a vampire because uh, the vampires uh, are worldwide uh, you know uh, you know sex stars now you know <laughs> yeah. so uh, I said yeah sure um, <laughs> that sounds great now tell me about your festival and um, it sounded wonderful and then I, I thought about my uh, my mother uh, mother on my uh, Catholic side of the family uh they uh, all came from uh, that city, uh, Krakow. So I said, "No, oh. it'll be it, it'll be m- nice uh, root rise uh, to um, to just uh, walk down the same streets uh, that my uh, grandmother and grandfather, uh, you know, experienced, um, you know, in their travels, uh, you know." Yeah, yeah. In nineteen oh six, whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah, my mom is my mom is from Poland too, so that's that's her her hometown as well. So, and uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm I'm, I'm uh, genealogically, um, um, you know, uh, half Catholic and half Jewish, and the, uh, the Catholic side comes from Poland, and uh, mm-hmm. the Jewish side comes from Romania, and okay. uh, it would be nice to um, you know, have that experience uh, just to get a sense uh, of, uh, you know, what they saw through their eyes, you know. Right. Uh, other than that, um, uh, I heard that uh, it's a university town, and it's a uh, quite beautiful city, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, they're doing so much uh, a variety of my music. They're doing a, a Titus and you know, um, 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 the uh, interview the vampire alien three and batman and frida and so it's a, a lot of um uh, material that they have right so uh, uh did you have any part in arranging or orchestrating the performance or are you just going as an audience member no no no, no. uh it, it was a lot of work mm-hmm. um uh, uh in terms of um um uh Calling and uh, picking the, the the right cues and uh, right. making it into a musical, um, uh, uh, more of a symphonic sense, uh, musical structural sense, mm-hmm. and and just um, you know it has a di- different function in the cinema that it has uh, when people are sitting are sitting uh, in audiences. So. Uh, there was um, uh, quite um, um, a lot of attention, and it took many months to uh, put this together. And and what was it like, you know, revisiting all your old stuff? Was it kind of retrospective? Did you uh, dwell on it, going, "Oh, wow, look at this," you know, I should have done this differently, or was it was it kind of a? I should have done this differently. I came up <laughs> most of the, most of the time. You know. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, you know, sometimes you, you go back and you say, oh, "Wow, uh, that's amazing!" I I, um, I wish I could do that now. Uh, it, it's uh, that's a uh, that's a gesture of a uh, um, uh, um, uh, a young man's work, or um, you know, someone that has uh, all that uh, 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 exertion of. Uh, 
energy uh, uh, at a certain age. And uh, now I'm, uh, I would just should be uh, tuckered out if I uh, tried to uh, attempt that. Uh, and the other things um, is, uh, oh, that's way too complicated. Uh, I can make it simpler. I can, uh, I can do that gesture easily now uh, in, um, you know, less strokes. You know, so uh, uh, it, it's uh, it's a funny perspective uh, um, when you think about 20 years of your life um, uh, and how uh, you would approach uh, the same uh, problem. Right. You know. So I mean, I mean, what does it overall? What does it mean to you personally to ha- to have this being presented, you know, to such a, a large audience? Well, whether it's uh, two people or one people, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, the, the large uh, audience is um, it's just a matter of uh, do they have a good sound system or not. It, it's not important to me. Mm-hmm. What's important to me is um, that all this work, all this toil uh, um, uh, that I expended on these pieces, if they're... Uh, musically uh, uh, worth hearing again that I put it into um, a playable uh, folios um, uh, and and have it available for future uh, use. As a very, very young man, uh, a very young boy, I realized that uh, composers, uh, not comparing myself, but mm-hmm. uh, folks like Beethoven and Bach, most of their works uh, are performed after they're dead. Right. So um, at, at one point, I have to get all those stuff, all this stuff out of the closet and put it into playable shape in a way that I, I um, approve, you know? Otherwise, someone else is going to do that for me after I'm dead. And, uh, and you know, they might pick the most embarrassing uh, uh, um, <laughs> examples of my music. So um, uh, uh, this way I have at least uh, a little control over uh, the the, um, the legacy uh, of the, the, these pieces after uh, I'm, um, you know, dead and gone. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know... I'm not talking. Uh, I'm not talking uh, um, uh, woefully. I'm. I'm just um, talking about uh, uh, librarian stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes sense. And uh, but uh, do you plan on releasing this concert specifically uh, as a CD release, maybe later for people who can't attend? Or no, I haven't thought about uh, about that. I, I know uh, Poland is uh, recording it. Mm-hmm. However. Um, the fact that I have these scores um, gives me um, flexibility of having um, events in other cities and other venues. Oh, yeah, that would be great uh, to go on tour almost, yeah. You know, it's one thing to say, let me play your score to uh, um, an interview with the vampire. It's another thing to have all the parts and all of the selections, uh, you know, uh, in order and... and um, and uh, uh, playable conditions, uh, even when you factor in uh, some uh, electronic uh, components, and um, you know, um, uh, less common um, devices using orchestras like voice chorus and uh, uh, viola da gamba, uh, you know, old instruments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Add it on to the uh, spectrum, right? So these these things aren't uh, that simple as uh, it appears. You know, uh, sometimes uh, film scores are, are do it are uh, completed in in uh, uh, layered forms. Sometimes the orchestra goes down, and then sometimes electronics comes on top of it, or vice versa, and uh, all of those sounds has to be combined into one score where a conductor can uh, uh, see it all on one page and uh, a, a device it. You know? mm-hmm. And um, so, and you mentioned that you're 
in the performance they're going to be doing uh, Alien 3 and Batman Forever, uh, two scores that I, I love so much. Um, uh, a little bit of Batman Forever. It, it's just like a, a tasting, um, uh, almost an encore uh-huh. uh, of Batman Forever. They're, they're doing Alien 3. They're doing an interview with the vampire, Titus, and Frida. Yeah, that's the uh, major focus. Right. Um, and uh, I just I wanted to ask you a little bit because uh, I hope you don't mind reflecting on those scores specifically. Uh, I, I've done you know, a couple of interviews recently with some composers, and we kind of discussed the topic of uh, kind of brand scoring, genre scoring. You know, if you say something like Disney or Looney Tunes, that people associate those with a certain type of sound. And both Alien and Batman are such you know huge franchises, and you kind you came in following you know two films before them and uh did you feel pressured during those films to conform to a type of sound that had been established or that did you feel like people expected your scores to sound a certain way uh, in the case of alien um no uh, absolutely not i didn't listen to um to the uh to the first the, two. the first one uh the first two i i i i, I remember being uh, uh, terribly uh, frightened watching the first film, and it was a gripping film, and uh, it was I, I wanted to run out of the theater, and I was just it was just <laughs> too scary for me, you know, and uh, and um, uh, uh, Goldsmith's uh, work was uh, you know exemplary uh, and, and really really beautiful. I, I didn't listen to it again, you know. Right, I right. Blotted it out of my mind. And uh, David Fincher, that, that was his first movie, and uh, he was encouraging me to, uh, you know, have a new slate completely. So um, I was starting from anew, and he gave me ample time. I, I composed the score in uh, a period of uh, over a year. Wow. So, so I had a lot of reflective time, a lot of time to uh, um, uh, collaborate with David, who uh, I had adored uh, working with. And um, and uh, at the end, things went crazy. The Los Angeles riots had set in. Uh, he was uh, he disappeared uh, for some reason. Whether it was the studio, or whether it was pressures from the riots, or, or whatever, and uh, and Terry Rollins was the um, uh, editor at the time, finished the film, and uh, it was uh, almost an hour taken out, uh, out of the film, so it was drast- drastically cut. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Joe Roth uh, uh, didn't like a lot of. Um, um, uh, Elfman's uh, choices, and he kind of took over, and uh, it got quite uh, ugly. Yeah, I mean, a lot. Of people, yeah, a lot of people criticize it, but I really do love the third film, and you know, it's its own. It, it feels it captures such a claustrophobic sense, and your music helps with that. And uh, but if you saw the original, uh, which was uh, practically uh, an hour early, but it went faster. Because uh, it, it had more emphasis on the um, on the dilemma of um, a, a woman showing up in uh, 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 um, a prison yeah. uh, uh, atmosphere in space where all the men uh, pledged uh, their vow of chastity. So all of a sudden they vow their uh, 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 feeling of chastity, even homosexual chastity. And and then a very 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 s- sexy woman like uh, 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 you know uh, that actress uh, Sigourney, Sigourney, you know, Weaver. Sigourney Weaver shows up and uh, uh, changes the whole ball game, you know, and um, and that became the um, actual drama of the thing, not the monster. Oh yeah, no, yeah, uh, and. Uh, um, uh, when when the movie was cut, the monster uh, is part. You know, the monster didn't get a good enough part mm-hmm. because he wasn't really part of the story. Essentially, he was just uh, represented by 
he 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 was represented by the fact that he was the eventual um, uh, deadline of everyone. He, he's going to kill everyone eventually. He's going to be the the, the the dragon, but um, maybe there's a dragon slayer among them. Mm-hmm. You never know whether they can band together and figure out how to get this dragon uh, uh, killed. You know, right. maybe Sigourney could do it. You know, mm-hmm. well, and then she became pregnant and uh, with the thing and uh, whatever. It, 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 it was a very complicated the situation. Yeah, yeah. And, and in terms of uh, the answer question, in terms of Batman. Um, uh, Danny, uh, Elfman, um, wrote, uh, a very, very, um, big orchestral piece, um, a Wagnerian style, um, uh, a piece and, um, and I didn't listen to it. I, I didn't pay any attention to it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I enjoyed li- listening to it when I heard it in the theater. Uh, I enjoyed the the, the movies, but uh, the new director had a new Batmobile, a new Batman, and everything else was uh, changed. So um, the, the one thing I retained was the um, large orchestra. But in my um, my thinking uh, of how it was different than uh, Danny Alton's, uh, I I went into jazz and, and went into. Um, uh, 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 zany, um, uh, uh, um, atonal, um, um, areas and, and, and things with, uh, uh, the, the, the character of Mr. E, you know, right, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, and, 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 uh, a different way, more, maybe more freeing, maybe more, um, uh, eclectic, uh, than, uh, Danny did without, uh, uh, taking anything away from uh, Danny's uh, perfect to work with, uh, uh, um, you know, yeah, yeah. The direction. It was funny because he just did a Q&A here in Burbank and uh, somebody asked him if what his most overrated score was and he said Batman. He says he doesn't think it's as good as everyone says it was. <laughs> But um, well, it was effective. It, it oh, was it was. Effective. And then, it was and then he should yeah. get the full credit for that. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, I love it. It's great. I mean, it's such it's such an epitome of that. You know, those Tim Burton films. You know, and your your score. I grew. I mean, I'm. I was growing up at that time when it came out, and I remember seeing Batman Forever. I counted fourteen times when <laughs> when it came out. So, you you were you're a big part of my childhood too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you hear the uh, new uh, remastered uh, issue? Oh yeah, it's a uh, love. It's it's amazing. I love it. It's it was such a surprise when it, I was like, yes, you know. <laughs> when they yeah, announced I it. like it a lot. I like it a lot because it uh, uh, closely uh, represents uh, what I was after. That's after good. Yeah. So I guess to to wrap up, um, last time we spoke, I asked you if you could score any movie ever made with no disrespect to the original composer, and you answered Giant, uh, which is a terrific answer. Um, but now I would like to add, to know, is there any kind of film that you haven't scored yet that that you would like to? I mean, is there... Uh, oh, eventually, are we going to see a, a romantic comedy by Elliot Goldenthal or an animated film? <laughs> I don't think uh, you're going to see a romantic comedy, yeah, but uh, I think you're going to see a... Uh, uh, sexy uh, love triangle type of movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, a movie musical that I'm working on called The Transposed Heads, mm. um, uh, which uh, takes place in uh, uh, contemporary New York City and uh, uh, with a love triangle involved, uh, involving one Indian woman and one. Indian man uh, from the Caribbean who has no idea about India or anything else uh, going back to India and all of a sudden, like in Alice in Wonderland, they fall into a rabbit hole and they're all of a sudden they're in mythic India, like uh, mogul India, you know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, they uh, have to. Uh, confront all the uh, 
uh, spiritual and magical uh, 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 manifestations uh, of, uh, of an old, old uh, culture. Um, and, uh, and they return back to New York City at the end. And, and so, so it's, it, it has um, uh, science fiction as well as um, um, uh, romantic love triangles uh, involved. So uh, that's, and it's a musical. So there's wow. 18, 18 <laughs> song songs. You know, um, I, 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 I lived that slightly in Prada where I composed like three, four songs. Mm-hmm. Um, but in, uh, using the Beatles music, I, I lived that in 33 songs in Cross the Universe, but it's right. not the original. It's uh, rearranging the uh, Beatles songs. In, in this one, it'll be uh, completely my songs. And uh, uh, it's... Uh, it's not an easy uh, um, uh, it, assignment. Is is uh, Julie directing it? Who's directing it? Yeah, uh, Julie is directing oh. it. Yeah. Uh, I can't. That sounds fast. That sounds fascinating. I can't wait. Um, um, but uh, thank you so much uh, for your time, Elliot. Uh, it's been a great pleasure good, to talk, good, talk good. to you again. Nice hearing your voice again. I can uh, just picture you and uh, you know uh, our last meeting together. <laughs> it was. Uh, hopefully, we get to do it again. Uh, um, it's. And I always look forward to your scores and your work, and you've been such a big part of my musical inspiration uh, as a screenwriter and such. So um, thank you again for taking thank the time. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, hopping on a plane and going to uh, Krakow. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see pictures from the event and everything. So good luck to you and, and Julian. Thank you. And thank uh, you. have a great time. <laughs>